Yeah. What's pop, Don't man? worry, we here too. What's up? Shout out to Brian Cooks. One or two. You're one of the first people in here. Shout out to all the earners. Let's let them in. What's going on? Marvelous Monday. Market Mondays. It's May 16th. 2022. Hopefully everybody had a great weekend, a safe weekend. Didn't get beat down by this rain that just passed through the city. What's going on? Instagram is bugging out today. Instagram is definitely bugging out right now. Like, this is crazy. What's up? What's up, y'all? Home team is here. Welcome. Welcome to another glorious edition of Market Mondays. We about to get started in one minute. Let me just put the bad call out. You know how we do. Yes. There's a lot to talk about today. Market was up on Friday. Back down today. Story of 2022, man. Yeah. Pain. Pain. It's going to be a lot of pain. Hey. And it's more pain to come. But, you know. Hey. The sun don't shine forever. Is this not I don't know why here? your advisors ain't forewarn you. Please, not <laughs> Jay. <laughs> you tried to tell him. That's a fact. I'm What's good, good, man? I'm good, man. I like the I like the sweater. Yeah, man. I, I'm trying to give sweater bay vibes, so I appreciate it. <laughs> yes, How y'all yes. feeling? How you think good, man? Good, you man. Look, you look like you're on the sunny side. <laughs> Life's good. Life's good. That's what Sun, you said, right? Sun's out. I love it, man. Everything yeah. good. How was your weekend, man? Big, big day on Saturday. So what's going on over there? Man, it was an honor. It was great. Uh, once again, thank you to Nicole, JP Morgan, Justin, everyone I met, MC Light, Damon John, Pierre Dom, Ty, 19 Keys, 19 hung out with me all day. Um, everybody in Red Panda who showed up, showed out, sold out the space. Thank you. I love y'all for real. It looked fire. Was it on the rooftop or was it inside of a place? It was inside. Then we went to the rooftop and I was Lloyd Banks on fire. <laughs> he came back in for a little second, so. But it was great. It's true, yeah. like truly an honor. Um, everybody, all earners, all Red Panda family, right now, go to Damon John Page. Tell him come on Market Mondays. Okay. If Big Cubano came, <laughs> <laughs> your camera's moving a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna stop it in a second. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Mark Cuban. I actually was just talking about him today. I don't know if you saw it with the Little Wayne situation. Oh, when uh, Little Wayne, man. Little Wayne was trolling. Little Wayne, Little <laughs> Wayne was trolling. Little Wayne was trolling Luka Doncic, and uh, Mark Cuban responded yeah. today. You see, you see what yeah. he said? It's a shit show. I'll have you front row. I have you front row. Took a put a picture of him up. <laughs> that so, boy Luka was different last night, man. Wow, Mark, Mark Cuban, man, yeah, front row for that. <laughs> Damn. Oh, before we start, um. Yeah, shout out to, to the good folks of American Family Life Insurance. That was dope. That was a dope event that we had in Atlanta um, for children and for adults as well. A lot of information, met a lot of great young people. Super, super dope. So um, I think we're going to be doing another one of those. Yeah. But shout out to, amazing. to Yo, the family. It was, it was dope. It was nostalgia. We got to speak in front of the youth again, man. It's been, it's been a while since we got to actually talk in front of a youth audience. I think Howard, I mean, Howard was like college students, but these were like teenagers. Uh, so it was dope, man. I got to talk to them, give them some advice, add a few of them into EYL University. So shout out to everybody that pulled up on us. Shout out to the parents that were That's there. Incredible. And then the adults, man, that was a dope session too. Uh, we, we was up there for like an hour and a half, two hours. Um, had, a, had a great session. So yeah. shout out to everybody that pulled up in ATL. <sighs> shout out to Atlanta. Uh, home away from home. That's a fact. Never a dull moment. <laughs> they're gonna nice write studio a, too. They're going to write a book one day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out sure. to the city of L.A. Shout out to LA. I was just going there. Shout out to legendary Kyrie Irving. Yes. My guy. Um, got a chance to, to kick it with him. We all did. Ian, myself, Troy, 19 Keys, um, Jamal. Shout out to Jamal. Mm -hmm. um, Abdullah. And uh, we went to the range and we had some fun and uh, dope conversation about hip hop. We talked about, we talked about Is basketball. What Is that what <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Kyrie, super, 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 super solid dude. Super funny dude. And you know me, I like to talk about sports and music. So that's right up my alley. We had that, we had a little, not really a debate, but you know, a conversation about sports 
about basketball specifically. We had a couple. Had Kyrie's a, my like-minded <laughs> brother. <laughs> my like-minded brother. We, we had a dope conversation about rap music. Yes. Um, and and a couple other things. So shout out to Kyrie, man. Stay tuned. A good hour of content. We did not even. Yeah. yeah. Definitely should have had some B-roll. Where's thirteenth where's and create when you need them. Damn, that would have been crazy. That was crazy. Yeah. 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 Uh, super humble brother. Yeah. Amazing. Uh. Yeah, a lot of stuff to come. I appreciate the invite to the crib. But yeah, that time at the range was great. Like that was the yeah, first time. Bomb builder. Yeah, man. You did great. Yeah, shout out to Ian for holding me down at the range. I had no idea what I was doing. I heard I heard something I thought was an explosion. It was actually a, a, a AR-15 just going off. I'm like, nah, bro. I'm about to you never get used to it. I can't, I can't do this, man. <laughs> I know people act tough, but every time I'm like, dear baby Jesus. <laughs> every I'm time, like, yo, what was that? Every time. Every time, shout yeah. out to you, bro. Yeah, you held, you held us down out there. That's a fact. Shout out, shout out to the gang. All right, so let's just jump right into this. I'm gonna I'm just make my announcements quickly. Um, shout out to my guy David Gross, a legend in the game, real estate mogul, um, business mogul, Nipsey Hussle's uh, business partner, the late great Nipsey Hussle's business partner. Um, really turns him on to a lot of different things as far as real estate. Also works with Luau Dane a lot, a lot of NBA players. So assets over liabilities, TV version comes out tonight. YouTube co- version comes out on Wednesday on Revolt. Shout out to Revolt. And then tomorrow, you want to talk about the episode tomorrow? Because that was, that was legendary. Yeah, the Oscars situation. Got that <sighs> rolling. Fresh off the <laughs> yeah, Oscars. Yeah. Shout, shout out to our, our bro, uh, Sean Finney. Uh, it was an interesting weekend uh, prior to the Oscars. We had, we had met with one of the creative directors of the uh, Academy Awards show. Uh, Black gentlemen, we had no idea of the amount of anxiety and preparation that goes into that one night. It's a whole year process. And so we spoke to him prior to the show and obviously we saw what happened to the show. And so we had a you know in-depth conversation about his thoughts and feelings about what happened after, but also the, that whole space of Hollywood, right? Everybody talks about Black Hollywood, but this, this is a 94 year old institution. Um, and most of us don't know the inner, workings of it and so he kind of breaks it down a little bit for one giving us education but showing how we can participate Uh, because there's many different careers and many different avenues you can be inside of Hollywood other than just being an actor obviously he's uh, you know heading one of the the biggest shows in the world and so it it was a great conversation man we're gonna stay tuned alert we put out the stay tuned alert make sure y'all tune into that one it's gonna be dope SUV rise is legendary (laughs) a lot of planning yeah 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 yeah, the bridge the bridge to Hollywood Building it one brick by brick. That's a fact. Um, and then the last thing that I will say is uh, InvestFest 2022. <sighs> stay tuned. We just got off the phone. Like, no joke. We stay, just got off the phone. Stay tuned. Pulling out, pulling out a lot of <sighs> missile strike. It's a missile strike. No, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than that. Missile strike. Get your tickets before the price goes up, please. Vendors, get your get your booths. I'm actually drinking out of my red panda cup, which I actually got. I believe I, I see got you. I yeah, that's from Invest. I, I got that I at Invest that. Fest. That's the, 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 the red panda booth at Invest Fest. I got a t-shirt and I got a a, a mug. Um, so yes, yeah. and the vendor. You know, listen, the marketplace, the, the vendors. You are gonna be amongst some major, major, major people. Make yeah. sure that you come correct. Make sure you come correct. We want to see everybody be victorious in this space and everybody was last year we want to continue that so we you know we added some more we added some more people to it so yeah be ready nah be go, ready. To, go to investfest.com get your tickets i'm telling you when we announce some names you're gonna wish that you did it earlier and we gotta have a moment of silence for everybody that lost their life in buffalo this weekend Man. in a senseless act of racist violence um terrorism yeah, terrorism. terrorism. Let's call it what it is. Um, just completely senseless and just, you know, I don't even really have any words for it. So rest in peace to everybody that lost their life and condolences to everybody that had a family member or a friend um, that was involved in the situation. Yeah. yeah. And to the entire city of Buffalo, the people who are in the market, who walked away with their life, um, but will be scarred forever for, from this tragedy. So yeah. My thoughts and condolences to everybody uh, um, in the city of Buffalo and everybody was affected, like Shadi said. And if anyone knows any of the family members, please reach out, connect us with them so we can do our part to help them. Travesty. Yes. Yeah. 
Disclaimer. All right, so let's do it. Let's do it. Our content is, well, first of all, y'all know the words, right? Do your own research. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important you do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you find on our show and wish to rely upon, whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. You know, that's standard. All right. Red Panda family, earners, we'll let you know something real quick, all right? We wanna let you know about a great choice if you're looking to bank. Shout out to our good folks at Ally. Ally is a leading digital financial service company with passionate customer service, innovative financial solutions, and are relentlessly focused on doing it right for both customers and our communities. Get with Ally so you can save, invest, and spend on all the things that matter most to you. For everything we need, we're all better off with an Ally. Shout out to Ally. We got a nice announcement at the end of the show to um, you know our, our people who will be joining uh, the, you know, EYL University. So shout out to y'all. Stay tuned. We're going to be announcing the, the, the first five of the of our contest. So stay tuned for that. Yes. Floyd, Floyd is yours, Ian. Uh, thank you to everyone I had a chance to meet the, uh, this week, and especially Aaron. I appreciate you. Um, this Saturday, we'll be in Dallas for the tour JP Morgan, Demi John, MC Light. Um, and Dallas tickets are sold out, so stay tuned for the next date. Thank you guys for supporting that. There will be no stop, live stock club call tonight, but uh, the 29 lessons that I gave to Xander about how to dominate a recession has been posted and I'll be live tweeting uh, some exclusive info tonight from this episode about the 20 things you need to do in this market. So love you. Oh, and I'll be dropping a new uh, episode of like the 10 best pieces of advice and trading for stock club tomorrow at 9 p.m. Central. So love you guys. Execute. Let's dominate. And Vest Vest is going to be amazing. I and wish wait, we can. And wait till you see what's after. <laughs> Get what we're taking one thing at one day at a time. One day at a time. Missile strike. Boy, get to do my full <laughs> show this year. Can we? Can I do pyro? We got wrong? I cover the insurance. I'll do my full intro. I'll be on some WWE. <laughs> and now. Boy. Boy. Uh, Bruce, get ready. Parachute. Parachute. Don't book it. For oh, real. also, um, the people that attended the Houston event, I know the emails has has gone out because I, I was actually yep. with Abdullah and he got an email. I, I got one. Well, they all got one. So, yeah. So check your emails. Please do. Check your email. Check your spam. Yeah, yeah. Check your spam. Check your emails. Um, Because I know I know that they um they definitely they definitely um, went out. Went out for sure. That's yeah. a fact. Thank you to the good team at Kajabi for assisting in accelerating uh the membership process. So thank you to you guys as well. Red Panda for life. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Leisure has been earned. <laughs> this year going to be great. Uh-oh. Can I get The Rock at the show? Somebody, y'all go tag The Rock. I need, I need him to walk me out. Best. <laughs> this is going to be a movie. Y'all know I want to tell the lineup. They're going to kill me if I do. <laughs> oh, no, we, we had it since we last told you. Yeah, we got to have a conference call. Yeah, another conference call. As soon as we get off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you know yeah. the rules, man. It's go bigger, yeah. go bigger. So we always yeah. choose go bigger. All right, you want to? You got slides? Yeah, I got a you okay. know a little vocal yeah, presentation. Oh man, my mom appreciated it last week. She was like, "This is so calming." Let's do it. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah, 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 appreciate that. That's alkaline water, Ian. Peace and serenity. <laughs> Ian, right? outside Ian, we're gonna we're gonna get that on, captured on video one day. Yeah, boy, <laughs> not the boat. <laughs> That's not me. the boat. Boaty and different, <laughs> boy. Uh, let me share. Make sure I show sound. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we got the whole. And Invest Fest will be back in Atlanta. That's a fact. Let me know if you guys. I want you to say it with me. We're good. Investing is really easy. We only choose to make it hard. In today's episode, I want to walk you through the 20 things that you need to know and do to be able to win in this recession while everyone is losing. So I want you to grab your pen pencil or write these notes down in your phone and I want to guide you through some of the revelations insights tips strategies um, I'm using and I've been told to add to our playbook to be able to win so number one you have to realize that a stock coin currency commodity or crypto always has a chance to go to zero that's number one I'll say it again a stock coin Currency, commodity, or crypto always has a chance to go to zero. 
When you're looking to get gains, the most important thing for you to do is to say, what conditions will make this stock or commodity or crypto, a thing that I love, go to zero or negative? So in, when oil futures went negative, that was the first time in my lifetime I had seen a future go negative. Anyone would have told you it's almost impossible for it to happen. But in weird markets, when there's li weird liquidity issues, sometimes, just sometimes, strange things happen and it always seems to happen when our account is invested in that thing, right? And we'll talk about Luna later, but who would have thought that a stable coin could have accelerated and caused or accelerated a crypto crash? And maybe tonight or maybe next week, I'll tell you what my thoughts are on that and why it was done and what the long term game is. For those of you who had a chance to meet with us over this weekend, thank you. I explained it to you. But please remember anything that you invest in could go to zero. And when people think that no matter what they invest in, it will never drop, when disaster happens, that's when the FOMO really kicks in. And that's what ends up damaging a portfolio and stops people from investing for a long period of time. Um, five lessons from unknown market wizards that I need you guys to know. So write these down. Number one, losing is a part of the game. Whether you are investing long term or trading, at some point you're going to have your losses. And the losses can shake your confidence. But one of the most important things that we need as investors and traders is our confidence. And the confidence comes from doing the research knowing how far a stock commodity crypto or asset will fall when it falls to certain levels. Where do we invest? That's where the power is. So when things are falling apart and everyone was investing and it was 2% from the all time high, you should be elated that this market is not falling. People were praying for good entries and good times to get in. And now that it's here, people are afraid. Also, all of your losses, if you write down why they happen, it will give you your blueprint on what to do to consistently win in the market. Number three, you have to develop a low risk idea. Let me ask you a question. If you invest in long term and you've invested in VOO, VTI, Apple and Microsoft, are you down considerably in comparison to your peers? Some of you are down because you chose to go for more aggressive growth. Invest in all asset classes so you don't have to hope that one is going to be a home run for you. That's why I said two tech, two index plus futures, right? Um, but the higher the risk does not always equate to the higher reward because what happens a lot of times, a lot of times we will take a higher risk trade or strategy. Then we get knocked out of the market and then the reward goes in our favor after we've already lost and it sucks but make sure you are focused on developing a low risk idea that pays you a king's ransom when it hits number four on every platform look at and test every indicator and see how it can give you an edge in the market now it doesn't mean i want you to trade every indicator but it does give you an advantage to know if an indicator is on your screen, so number one, macro indicators. So we talked about the recession indicators. We talked about quantitative easing. Um, we've talked about Warren Buffett's indicator for predicting a recession, which we talked about last week. Please go view that show. But know what every indicator can do. And for those of you that are incredibly serious, those of you that have top row energy, the top 20% of people on this planet that truly want to dominate investing and trading, that will give you an edge like no other. And number five, be able to invest and trade in every asset, long-term stocks, short-term trading, stocks, bonds, crypto, Forex, mutual funds, commodities, everything. Because if you don't, when the market is bleeding down, you won't be able to capitalize off of these moves. People are not saying it because it is not a acceptable thing to say, but there are some people that are profiting more than ever from this market. Shout out to those you and dream team uh, that are putting up some amazing numbers. I love you dearly. Um, these are the five lessons that I uh, gained from the meetup this 
weekend with Red Panda after the J.P. Morgan event. And Nicole, again, thank you. Uh, MC Light, Dom Kennedy had a blast. Pierre, Dom, like I appreciate you dearly. Um, I got Ty came in town um, and everyone that I had a chance to meet. But number one is unwavering and undying dedication. So even this morning, uh, John, Ty, Wheezy, Emily hung out yesterday. Got in the elevator. I said, John, what you about to do? He said, man, I'm about to go to bed. <laughs> got to be up early. And for those of you who don't know, you have to get up at 5 o'clock to start trading on the West Coast if you trade in a certain market. And he was up at 5, 1. Didn't make any excuses. And I'm going to preach this and say this more often, but if you are not in a financial position that you want to be, look at the routines and systems that you have in place to see what is stopping you from becoming rich and that is causing you to be poor. Um, number two, a gentleman drove nine hours to come to the event. And I appreciate you for coming. We talked for maybe an hour and I can tell his thirst. So number one, he executed everything that he saw and he's only been following me. I think he said 30 days, bought 20 books. I'm like, how can I help you? He's really trying to get one edge in a market that will allow him to get higher gains than everyone else. You need hunger in order to be able to do this consistently. So if you lost your motivation or because you didn't follow the plan, you just say, hey, I didn't follow the plan and it resulted in a loss. Let me see how well things go when I actually do follow a plan in place. Number three, you need a trading tribe and that protects you from big losses and bad trades. And it doesn't mean powwow with five friends, but you need to have someone that you check in with every day for three years and send your results to. Don't explain why you lost or won. Because if you have done your homework and you shared what your return should be, if you take 30 trades, you should know what your Sotino index is going to be, your Olsen index is going to be, your rate of return, how much you'll draw down in the trade, how many trades you'll need to break even if you get on a losing streak, and what your ultimate return is going to be. Number four, your number one job is to find one thing per month that will give you an edge in the market that no one else has. I'm going to ask you guys an honest question. How many of you are still reading 20, 30, 50, 100 pages per day and haven't missed a day? You have to hunt. I'm telling you, I write. I'm giving you the plan. Some of you are like, what else do I need to do? Follow the plan. I'm giving you what to invest in long term. I'm telling you how to trade and how to set it up. You have to put it all together and believe that you're worthy of hitting these goals. And number five, for those of you that are incredibly dedicated and love this craft and love this sport, you will be able to print money like no other. I posted on Twitter last week, the first company that is able to give a consistent return for a decade straight, good market, bad market, choppy market, sideways, and not lose for clients, those founders will be trillionaires. And now more than ever, people need wins. And I'm proud of you for those of you who have been dedicated to this craft and dedicated to winning. If you have not been, it is now your chance to get back on the saddle and win. It doesn't matter if, you, or if you're doing derivatives or options, swing trading, Forex, crypto, penny stocks. It doesn't matter. Follow your plan. Put in chat. I deserve to follow my plan so I can profit and get wealthy for my family. You deserve this. And the only thing that is stopping you is too much social media, too much communication, too much talking and not enough doing. And here's how you know I'm right. You got it. You guys read or listen to anything from Kathy Woods, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Mark Cuban. Michael Burry in the last five days. Yes, you have, right? Okay. None of them have said, in order to get our companies out of 50%, 70% drawdown, none of them said the answer was email, social media, or more conference calls. So even in the tasks that you select to do every day, there is an asset class of tasks that need to be done, invest in trading, finding an edge, and there are liabilities. Tune in to Assets and Liabilities. An amazing show on Revolt by these good-looking brothers at Earn Your Leisure, right? But 
And I even had the conversation with, with Nicole. Nicole was like, hey, you know, it's, and joking with Keys. Hey, man, it's hard to get in on the phone, you know, reply to text and email. And I'm like, but, but man, it's not nothing bad. Me and Red Panda. It was all Red Panda in there. Why? If these gains are not good for them, they won't show up. Or maybe they'll show up to try and be mine, you know. Right. Focus on the three things in your business that matter the most. And that's where all your luck is going to come from. And I want you to go to Google and type in Yahoo Finance Gainers. And if you go to the site, it will give you the top stocks for today. And usually I'll go to the stocks and say, hey, these are the ones that did incredibly well. And here's a five year. This is what I want you to do. I want every one of you to look at these stocks. So Lego, Mantech, Rattler, Midstream, uh, BCCLF, Spirit Airlines, Clear uh, Secure, um, Auto Home Incorporated, every stock that you see on here. And I want you to put in chat. If you look at the five year month, is this stock a good company to buy or not? This is how you can begin to build a watch list. And I want to say this as well. You still need to be going through 500 stocks a month and at least 50 stocks per day in order to see the opportunities and divergence in the market. If not, you may not perform as well. You're going to miss opportunities. There are going to be some companies that are doing incredibly well that you never thought of, given that the market conditions have changed. So, yes, go to Google, type in top gainers, and it will tell you the percentage change on the day. It doesn't mean that you should hold them for a long period of time, but I want you guys to literally go through everyone and tell me if it is a good company to invest, invest in. This is the first quiz of today. And then if you go back to Google and type in top losing stocks, and you can pull these up and it will give you a list of stocks that are not doing well. And what you want to do here is you want to go through this entire list. Once again, I want you to look at the five year month. So I want to be very clear. Five year month first and see is Forge Good, Cloudfair, Sprout, Mongo, Wayfair, Shopify, Asana. Go through every single company to see. If these are a good investment, you may find a company of incredible value that everyone is sleeping on. I'm going to tell you this. It's not the ones you guys were asking about last year. Snowflake, Palantir, Rivian. Rivian had no revenues at all. No cars had been shipped and it was worth a hundred. I'm like, what is the crystal ball worth? They hadn't moved any cars. None. Right. How is that acceptable? Some of this is just really common sense. Um, look at this top loser list for the day and see Nicola. Right. If any of these are of value and if these are companies you should keep on your top list of stocks that you're interested. In. And I know if you are just getting started in investing, it feels like, man, as soon as I got the dedication and insight, inspiration, or a desire to invest in the stock market that began to fall apart. And the thing that I want to tell you is that you are not missing out. The losses that you take today and lessons that you gain from it are going to give you an edge in the market like no one else in the world has. And one of the things I talked about this weekend at the JP Morgan event is that uh, how much of a blessing me getting started in the 2008 recession was. And the reason why is I was able to make mistakes, see how quickly a stock could fall or rebound. And then also the number one rule to always remember that a stock can or commodity or crypto or future could go negative or go to zero. So some of the stocks down from the all time, there's a, a magical list of them. Uh, Carvana, which they need to improve upon the delivery of the cars. The vending machine thing is innovative. To not get the car and not have the proper plates, you know, but I'm sure they'll work that out. When capital is flowing, and this is why I always say, focus on 
the number one thing in your business. For me, the number one thing in my business is to get returns. Nothing else fucking matters. Put in chat, what's the number one thing for your business? When you buy the iPhone, nine times out of 10, the iPhone is going to work and not be defective, right? So NVIDIA, Facebook, Zillow, Square, Sprint, Snap, Etsy, Palantir, Netflix, PayPal, Neo, SoFi, Teladoc, Roblox, Roku, uh, Unity, Fiverr, Robinhood, Coin, and as I've said it before, but as a class, brokerage firms usually are not good investments to hold for long periods of time because there is no substantial edge there. Rivian, we've talked about before, of course. Um, DraftKings, right? So out of that list, go and look out of this one list and say, well, who are the two companies out of this that will be great for the next 10 years? NVIDIA more than likely should be one of those. Should be one of those. Please be careful, be mindful. And the reason why some of you are taking these losses is because you're listening to too many sources of information who has no accountability to you if you do well or not. Only you and you alone care about your gains. And right now it's looking like pre-quantitative easing. So from 1996 to 2007, go study what happened. Tech stocks were flat. Inflation was higher. Gas was higher. Study 2000, 2002. And I told you guys in October, a crash will come. NASDAQ is currently 27% off its all-time high. What area did I say five months ago is a good area to load up that is not the 50% area? Study those down years. And it's, here's what to do. From every year from 1996 to 2007, I want you to go through literally day by day to see what the averages were on every fall and every drop. And that's how you get your targets. For those who do the work, you're going to get an edge in a market like no one else has ever seen. For those of you who don't, you're going to be at the mercy of the market. Um, and I saw California public employees retirement system add an AMD and square to their retirement plan. Quite interesting, right? Um, I told some of you privately what I thought was going to happen with square Saturday. I think that is going to pan out. AMD is a great addition. And also when people start to go on an attack on crypto, AMD and Nvidia will be a key component. No pun intended to making that become a reality. And last year, this is why I tell you not to focus on thematic investing or rotation. I thought everybody gave a damn so much about ESG companies. And this year, oil is taken off like crazy. So Conoco, Marathon, Intero, BP, Phillips, Chevron are hedges. So if, when I said it before, if oil doubles, in one year, it's usually a sign that a recession is going to come. So when oil went negative, it's hard, it would have been hard to time it. But if you got in, you've been holding since then, you could see the disparity in the market. That's why when people are telling you, well, gold is a hedge and the dollar is a hedge against inflation, those things, those axioms are not always true. There's two sets of information. The information that people give you to kind of just pat you on the button, send you along, and then the real information. No one really said, hey, invest in oil to offset this. And then when the market is normal again, because you have to remember that energy, the energy sector was the tech sector before technology became a big thing. And yes, this uh, crypto crash is very reminiscent of the, the 2000 crash and Bank of America said the same thing. But for those of you who believe in crypto and Bitcoin gets to that 20,000 dollar level or below load up and hold for a 10 year period. There's no asset that's given better returns over a five or 10 year period. Stay focused, stay locked in 
on your craft. Don't deviate. I know some of you want more gems and more insights and more books and more podcasts and more PDFs. And I want to do all this homework that doesn't matter. None of that shit puts money in your pocket, man. Doesn't give you freedom. Right? I want you to stop being information addicts. I want you to execute and get paid incredibly well. I'm going to go through a couple stocks and we'll wrap here. But now the era that we're going to be in with angel investing, venture capital, public markets and small businesses is going to come back to old rules. The companies with the best business model that is able to get the best human capital in their business for the lowest fee with the highest profit margin and loyal customer bases will win. You have to go find those. That is your job. Go hunt internationally for the companies with the best business model, high profit margins, loyal customer bases with an edge that cannot be replicated or stolen. And those are the companies that are going to dominate. And Saudi Aramco is taking over Apple as the number one company in the world. A lot of times when we're looking at, you can go to visual, visual capitalists, but a lot of times when people are talking about the top companies in the world, those are not mentioned. That's why I kept saying, go study internationally. That'll give you the edge that you need. And the thing that I do in private at these events is the thing that I want to do with you here tonight and tell you, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be wealthy and you deserve to be free. And sometimes we don't take the actions that we feel that we should simply because we do not feel that we're worthy of the money or don't want the responsibility that comes with it. But what's the alternative? To not earn, to not take care of yourself, to not take care of your family. This is why it's important. While the market is in turmoil, I can be a voice of serenity and compassion for you. In very few industries does exciting things make the most money. I was talking to Ty about this earlier. There are some businesses that are so boring on the outside, but they are recession proof across the board. And even in recessions, they do even better. Your job is to go find those. Whether you know it or not, whether you work for someone or you have your own company, you are an individual business and your competition is every other business on earth, which is every other human, hedge fund, venture capitalist, angel investor, broker dealer. The entire world is hunting for alpha, for return, for gains. And then as you climb this magical mountain of money, you then still have to find a way to have peace, health, happiness, joy, Great friends, great family, be a good steward in the community, good reputation, reliable, and honest person, and then you die. Focus on the thing that matters. Investing is easy. It's not hard. Invest in the top two companies that dominate a decade or a generation. Invest in index funds. Pair them together. But because you may not have wanted to put the time in um, to learning how to take 12 or 10 great futures trades in a year, you chase something where the gain wasn't there or you chase a SPAC. And for my traders, because you think that you will be able to outperform the market day in, day out without great habits and great systems in place, you don't invest long term. Please write this down. Your job is to have 28 oceans of revenue in your possession. And I know when some of you first heard it, you hated it. But how much smoother would life be for all those that you love if you had those 28 and you were able to help? That is the name of the game. And I don't think you should short things for a long period of time, but for a long time, UVXY is something we talked about in Stock Club as a hedge um, S A R K K is one for arc. And I'll stop there. I'll wait till next week to give you another one. 
even with the inverse ETFs, I've said it. I only want you to hold it for three to five days because when your fortune stops and those, it's game over. And I know it can be fun to get 14%, 20%, 50% in a day. But what makes all those gains go away is if we don't focus and lock in on the plan. I want to say it again. UVXY, any inverse ETF that goes up as the market falls, I only want you to hold for three or five days. Please put three or five days. Zoom right now is not attractive. Uh, Peloton is not attractive, even though I like some of the managerial changes that they've made. If you're doing options for trades and even with that options, and then I've learned this too, not to attack any asset class. For all my financial content creators, the big, take it from me, the biggest mistake you can make is attacking an asset class because the army that believes in it is going to attack you. The real secret is to use every asset in your possession and put them on a ranking system. Long-term investing is always going to come first. Trading is going to be at the bottom third of that pole. Now it's up to you to go do. Two tech, two index, no stress, Apple and Microsoft. And let's say you're watching this 10 years from now, whatever the top two companies are that have a stranglehold on consumer and enterprise with the highest market cap and highest amount of revenue, that is who you invest in. You hold for a long period of time. In closing, if you can do everything over from your investing journey, in terms of long-term investing, what are the two things that you would do better? Whatever those two are, those are the two that you do now. Recessions are not bad. If you're not homeless, destitute, your power's not out, you're fine. You're gonna have to suffer for maybe maximum of three years, more than likely, when a chip shortage uh, starts to lighten up a little bit, March, April of next year, we'll be fine and you'll say, Phew, made out of recession and you'll be happy that you invested. Stay focused, you don't need more information. You just simply need to execute upon the information, assets, and strategies that you have now. Love you all. Thank you guys for tuning in to Market Mondays. Please go watch every other episode that we've done if you truly want an edge in the market. And if I've made you money, please put yes in chat. My name's Ian Dunlap. Some people call me the master investor. More importantly, I'm Sanders' dad. Love you all. Over and out. Peace. Yes. Short film. That was a... A short film brought to you by Ian Dunlap. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Dunlap. Thank you. Trade Hover. Two stocks record himself. Be mindful. Be grateful. <laughs> voice Be over. grateful. You may never see a dude like this ever again. Voice overs. Have you ever thought about doing voice overs? We gotta we gotta figure this out. People have been telling me, you know, oh. I, I should do a thing or two. Pixar, call me. Audio books. Yeah, man. Morgan Freeman. Audible. We gotta get I told I told I told, I told Rick Ross. Remember I told Rick Ross that. He said that it was uh, something he thought about. Yeah, he should definitely. Yeah. yeah, I I have his audio book. It's hilarious. Rick Ross. Yeah, he's actually reading it. It's his voice. Yeah, I'm saying he's reading. It. Yeah, that's hilarious. No, no, Rick Ross is a um, he's one of these guys that has a legendary voice. It's like Rick Ross, Morgan Freeman, Ian Dunlap. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Yo, uh, yes, in that order. <laughs> in that order. <laughs> that's a legendary lineup. That's a legendary lineup. lineup. <laughs> Extremely legendary. That's a fact. That is a fact. Um, hit the like button. YouTube with the like button, 6,900 people closely approaching 7,000. So, all right. So we got a segment, segment. So we got the, we got the segment down. Um, so now we're going, we're going to talk and I believe we have a guest, but before we bring the guest on, let's, let's talk about some trending topics. Um, if we can, that people might be interested in. So, um, Luna and the collapse of stable coins. So this, this is something that's in the stable coin situation is very interesting. Troy, we were talking about this the other day. Jeez. If anybody's not familiar with um, crypto, you know, you have a stable coin, which is really pegged to mimic the US dollar, USD. Mm -hmm. And the whole point is that is that it's supposed to be stable, right? Like you can just, it's like a money market account uh, for a brokerage. And you can, you know, whenever you want to take your money out of crypto without actually, you know, transferring it back over to fiat currency, 
you can put it in a stable coin and um, you know, the stable coin is supposed to just, you know, hold up and be solid. Oh, that didn't happen. Surprise. Unstable. Unstable coin. Yeah. So you want to talk about this stable coin situation? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that makes perfect sense, right? Like when we saw the market ticking down, you can take your money out, put it into a US, well, I shouldn't even say USD, but a stable coin. And you could let it settle, like you said, in a money marketing account. What happened was uh, that coin wasn't so stable. It dropped under a dollar and dropped to 99 cents. Now, the, the key uh, with this is that it was pegged to uh, the Terra blockchain. So there's UST, which is the stable coin, and then you have Luna, right? And so that's the coin under the, the, the Terra. So they were synonymous with each other. Every UST was equal to one uh, Luna. Um, and then when that dropped under 99 cents, now it's not stable. And so people saw that they were like, hey, I can buy UST and trade it for my Luna coin. And once that started happening, every time you buy one, Luna coins get burned and vice versa. But what happened is that people started buying so much UST that it started burning in the supply. And there's a maximum amount. I don't know if anybody saw that in the white paper. I know I didn't see that. There's a maximum amount that they can have in a day. And once it hits that number, people, couldn't move anything more. So panic happens. Coin drops to 91 cents. People catch wind of that. Coin drops even further. Got down. What is it down to? Nine cents. Nine. It got, um, it got down to nine cents. This is extremely disturbing. That's the first part. And then, so the UST obviously was supposed to be stable drops to that. But the Luna coin, which was trading at $116, I don't even know the percentage now. It used to be like an eighth of, of a percent. I don't even, it's like four or five zeros. So imagine that, like people who had their money in UST and in Luna as a quote unquote savings for the crypto space from I think the ninth to about the 12th, quickly it was gone. Three, $3 billion yeah. in Bitcoin was, was allegedly put up to try to stable the situation. That didn't work. So now people are saying, what happened to $3 billion of Bitcoin? It's a whole, it's a whole thing. Yeah, the, the Bitcoin was supposed to be a trigger, right? If, if the coin hit a certain level, it would trigger the buying of 3 billion Bitcoin to actually buy more of, of the Luna, but that didn't happen. So now it went, the value cap, so this is crazy. The market cap for Luna was 40 billion at one point, right? When it got down to that trigger point, I think it had to hit like 11 billion, right? And then after that, it got down to two. And so that last two was supposed to be, hey, we're supposed to buy Bitcoin. Now people are looking like what happened? And so I saw Vitalik speak the other day I think today, he said, if they really wanted to help the the people, the ninety the ninety nine percent of the people who own the coin, they could use that last, I guess, three billion of of Bitcoin to actually pay some of those wallets. The whales, or who he, he didn't really care about, it's like the, the middle people, like the little people, like us, right? Who were trying to buy, getting involved in cryptocurrency and try to figure out the space, and we're putting, we're learning about stable coins. When you put it in a position like this. And it just backfires and like there's no explanation for this. Well, what's your take on it, Ian? In my Zen state, I've learned it does no justice to anybody to say, I told you so. Um, if I have this product, iPhone, and I put a veneer over it and I call it the Ian phone, that is called what? Forgery. Plagiarism. And if I tell you that I have a credit line and I'm secured it with my capital for a thousand dollars, and when you go look, I have four hundred and fifty dollars. That is called what? That's fraudulent behavior. Great example at scale. And here's a big lesson I want you guys to know: there is no such thing as a safe investment. Either your money is multiplying or it is declining in value. That's it. Now we can talk about why this happened. And I know um, I'm not the most forementioned expert on crypto, but even with Vitalik, even though I told you guys who was back in this buy, I, I like him as an entrepreneur. Um, if they are talking about giving back to the little people, that's how people get used. Why didn't they help? Why was no little people involved in the building in any of these fucking projects and make billions? 
usury. Be careful. And I know they're pushing an initiative and we do need change. We do need a financial revamping of the system. But is anyone surprised about this? The only thing I'm shocked about, it didn't happen with Tether first. Hmm. Tether. And when that bubble Tether. pops. Tether. If, if, Tether, if Tether, Tether goes under, yeah. that, that's, that's tough. Not if, when. No, when is, okay. that, that's catastrophic. But it's been it's been battle tested though. Tether, can remember the last the last crash, people thought that Tether wasn't going to survive. We didn't we didn't trust it at first. No, I didn't trust it. Yeah. I didn't trust it at all. Yeah. You know what was battle tested as well in the last recession? Bernie Madoff, and he was the president of Nasdaq. Well, time sometimes will tell. <laughs> they let. Sometimes they let. I'll say me. Let's say hypothetically, I have the power to destroy a coin, crypto, or asset. And then I can do my little Pied Piper thing and say, come over here with me. I'll save you. Watch how in two years, a government entity comes in and say, yeah, you love crypto, but it fell apart and it wasn't safe. Now, let me give you our version of it. And now it's going to be backed by the Federal Reserve. You have to be careful what you ask for. To be very honest, when these market caps are fluctuating like this, do you guys not realize this is financial warfare and terrorism? So for those of you who grew up in the hood, we knew people that would hurt people over 1,000 to 20,000. This is billions of dollars. You don't think that there's a fight behind the scenes of who is going to get control of this financial market and control trillions of dollars. It was never about the little people. It's good marketing. If it was, they would have had everyone included on the ground floor involved in this project. Tether will be next. Don't say I didn't warn you. Yeah. Don't say you warn Yeah, I put it in my notes here. So like, here's, here's that idea for, warning. The, for the Terra blockchain, right? So the more you buy UST, uh, the more Luna gets burned, making the remaining Luna supply more valuable. So you see the correlation there. And they even put an enticing situation. It was like, yo, if you inv invested in the UST, it was a yield of 19 US, USD, right? UST, UST. It was a essentially a 19% yield or a 19% gain on your on your investment, which is like, I mean, if you're new to the space and somebody's telling you if I invest this and I'm gonna get a 20% return, you can see why people would do it. But you know, unfortunately, we, we saw what happened. And also too on, on a returns basis, no, anytime someone tells you a flat percentage gain, 10, 20, 40. 80, 100% return, you are being scammed. Returns, shout out to an advisor. How many years when you were advising clients, the year ended flat at 10%, 12, 20, 40, 80, 100? For those of you who are hooped, if you average 20 points a game, you were scoring 25 a bunch. And then you had a stretch where you got hurt or your coach pulled you and was on some BS, right? Life does not work like that. So it should be 19.735% in these market conditions, da, da, da. But during this great reset, great crisis, players are going to be moved around. And it's a epic battle between venture capitalists and hedge funds and banks about who's going to control the space. And I, this is always the lens, for, especially for those of you, if you don't, particularly care for my delivery system on how I relate this information. Here's how to know if a crypto coin is good. If I was selling it, would you buy it? So I'm going to take a coin and tie it to the dollar, but everybody in crypto supposedly hates fiat currency, but I'm going to peg it to. You realize that when you do that, you are fighting the Federal Reserve. Better off slapping God. Pick your enemies. Oh. Really I'm close. Too short. You know, I'm too short to box with God. Please. Please. Please be mindful. Um, shout out to uh, 19 Keys on the check-in and also MG the Mortgage Guy on the check-in. What up, bro? What up, Matt at N19? What up? 19 Keys. Interesting guy. <laughs> Legendary run he's on right now with his show. Shout out to high level. High level conversations. High level. Never know what you're going to get. These conversations, conversations are needed. Yeah. This is true. Yeah, yeah. there's the no wealth without health. The Actually, the origin of wealth was rooted in health. 
prior to 1800. That's the ultimate. Well, what sense does it make to have all this money? And I was telling people Saturday, what good is it to cut off all your friends? Only our community gets told that. Level up, cut off all your friends, get new friends. What good is the money if you don't have anyone to kick it with? It means nothing. Yeah, or you're sick. We've done the absolute opposite. Shout out to yep. all the EYL family. Yeah. Um, what other assets can go down 90%? <laughs> Everyone is going to hate the take, and Rashad and Troy don't agree. Okay. Ethereum. Good old Ethereum. I know. Cl- Mike, tell. clip that up. <laughs> I send it to everybody. Ah. What, who Ethan. is... Who is Ethereum's biggest competitor? Not the coin. What entities are they up against? Now, they do have a hell of a market maker and protection mechanism in JP Morgan. I'm going to keep saying that. Hell of a protection mechanism, right? Who is their biggest competitor? And this won't happen for, what year is it? Not until probably 26 or 27 or something like that. In the crypto space, who's their biggest competitor? Just in general. Oh, Just in general, like like banking institution. Yeah. yeah. Banking Jay institution and I was going at it, but they, they, I'm looking at the players behind the scene. Yeah, I was going to say the, I mean, the, the game, game and fifty thing wasn't really about them; it was about the powers that be behind. Yeah, gotta, I mean, in the crypto space. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna let you tell us the world, but. I was obviously say Cardano, Solana. Like, no, he's, definitely, he's saying saying, like, he's I know what like he's saying. in the banking industry. Yeah. Solana is not really a competitor to Ethereum, I don't think. But all right, who is it? Who is it? Who to, is to, it to, to give a better to give a better analogy, <laughs> most of these cryptos are artists. Which hedge funds are the labels to them? So I was with Dom Kennedy this weekend. Kudos to the king. It's a lot of artists that act like they're not signed right now, playing an independent thing. And they're signed like crazy. Same thing is happening in crypto because they, hedge funds are basically saying you're either going to allow us to have a partnership or strategic alliances together, or you may not make it. And so you're, you're also saying, competing against the government and Federal Reserve, too. Right. So then that the back of the hedge fund would be JP for them. Right. In, in your turn, from your analogy, right, either you're going to let us be part of this or you might not make it. Get down and lay down. Oh, Th- then they made their win. Yeah, that's one. So go look at who Solana's been meeting with and what protect. So the, even gotcha, with Bitcoin, gotcha, and, gotcha, and now gotcha. everyone's like, "Yo, we weren't talking about decentralized the currency. We were talking about the blockchain technology." If fourteen entities own majority share of the blockchain, doesn't that give them controlling interest of an entity? And property or no when people think decentralization they're thinking of one if i own cnn fox abc tlc so i can put out 90 day fiance part two and i split it up amongst all our kids and i just don't own it do we not still have a network okay but i, I don't know anything i'm not and crypto, I'm not a master. I've learned too. Entrepreneurs, please write this down. The best information that you have, keep to you and your friends. One thing that really freed me, my dad was like, you're only responsible for taking care of Xander and a couple of friends. You don't got to say the world. You did that already. Do your research though. You Once again, do you think, in every industry this happens, do you think that any industry, person, entity, asset, or intellectual piece of property will get so hot that they won't force a way into. You saw what happened with 50 and Jimmy Iovine. 50 was the hottest thing smoking on Interscope. Shout out to everybody who worked in the building. When he put out SMS audio, boy, Jimmy was like, this is my exit. I'm going to kill you at all costs. Happened. Even the Kanye 50 debate, man, orchestrated by Iovine to not help him to ruin his perception of him being a A A-class act. Ripple. I'm gonna let y'all do the research though. Okay. 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 I'm following you. Here. Will, so, when we talk after though. Yeah. 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 I, I mean, I yeah. see people put in, in, in the comments as well. And I was starting to think as I'm hearing you talking, I see where you're going with this. So you're saying 
and this would be interesting, like when we talked about follow the signals. So when you see uh, a broker is like Fidelity saying like, hey, we're going to allow Bitcoin to be, or cryptocurrency, are we now looking at which ones are actually going to be allowed on their brokerage firm? Yeah. Because there's obviously going to be an interest inside of that. I mean, the demand and, is- It's high. It's and even, demand. Yeah, and Bitcoin then when people like- going to be supreme. Absolutely. Bitcoin supreme. And, and when people are like, well, BlackRock and Citadel are teamed up to destroy stable, your job is to destroy all competition. It's so, this is like, you guys want the truth or you want the Carlton Banks version of shit? The truth is any considerable threat, you destroy entire lineage. That's why for those- 48 laws of power. For those of you that want to be in pharma, banking, hedge fund, media, world politics, there is no such thing as true freedom unless you dance in between that five to fourteen million dollar space where you're not too big of a threat to the big boys and you're just out of the trenches. You get to that twenty five to one hundred, you have to pay a toll roll, and we see music industry is a prime example. Every artist, man, what can I do to break breakthrough? What kind of music you do? Rap. Okay, you need a gangster behind you. And the beats, who gonna protect you? You going into business with some of the biggest gangsters on earth, you need a gangster to protect you. You seen Takashi got snatched up, whack got in his pockets, the other young boys back in his pocket. Boy, you negative without a hit. <laughs> whack getting 50%, other boys getting 50%. What? <laughs> he gonna he gonna he gonna he gonna make a diss record about you. That's it, Ian. That's fine. That, that, that helped me hold my Facebook out. I'll promote it. Let me know a week before you do it so I can get my YouTube, SoundCloud, and Facebook advertising budgets together. Yeah, and we can on, run this into the ground. It'll be on Clubhouse in T minus 17 minutes talking about this. So that's fine. We got you. Why don't you talk on. about people in his pockets? Talk about a 360. Boy. Different. Boy got a 520. <laughs> Round and you round. need protection in some of these <laughs> industries. It is warfare. And it's different when quantitative easing was going. The capital was flowing. Everyone was getting funded. Fundamentals didn't matter. Um, I was listening to Josh's show and uh, Jan was on. I was like, yo, some of the companies that were getting funded were going off 50 times earning, 70 times earning. And it, Rivian, the prime example, you hadn't produced a car yet. Let y'all have put out Rivian and no car. Boy. YouTube think pieces all day. Uh, have they given up on a culture and all that? Rivian do it. Y'all don't say nothing. Let me have perform like Kathy. And I love Kathy. I'm going to be real. A lot of y'all didn't even know who Kathy was before I mentioned her. She was Styles P. She was ghostwriting. A lot of them portfolios. And as soon as she became a threat, Walter White, Jesse Pinkman, the person that brings drama, negativity, has seen too much, or competition is going to want to kill you. You now are seeing it with Michael Saylor. You think all of a sudden a stable coin called a crypto crash? No, Mike got too popular. They know that 21,000 level is key. That's why you now hear people saying 20,000. They want to squeeze his ass out the market and destroy micro strategy. This is warfare. That's why Buffett puts on a happy little smile and eat them little candy and just say, ah, oh, I don't know. Me and Charlie, huh, it's a great show. <laughs> great show. Greatest shark of all yes. time. That's a fact. And if, if you, you know, if you didn't be trying to figure out what we talk, we spoke about Michael Strategy uh, last week when we were talking about points and places to get in, in some of these investments. Yeah. Obviously, 21 was the number, but yeah, I've seen 20 earlier today I, as well. I was always taught you kill an ant with a sledgehammer. Absolutely. Don't let that go over your head. Um, all right. So last week, Troy, you 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 talked about Rivian. Yeah. You talked about shorting, um, and and nobody sent me any reparations for that. Shout out to all of y'all out there. Yeah, boy, you know how I feel now, right? <laughs> boy, some of y'all, oh boy. The first day got the first day that he has said to me what I saw him uh, was that Wednesday. Wow, wow, yeah. I'm boy. like I said, follow the signals, um, and so we kind of were like, well, what's next? What's next? I'm not sure. I, I'm leave. I left the, the Rivian train yet, um, as far as mm -hmm. making puts on it. Uh, and we saw the, the we saw the earnings and yeah they have 17 billion in cash but they also made I think 5,000 cars right and so they made 5,000 but 500 of them got recalled in that in that announcement and so like okay that's one thing then last night or early this morning we saw that 
Ford sold, sold more shares. So now they have 15 million shares that they sold. And now there's another lawsuit with a supply of seats from delivery vans. So that order of Amazon that they, they you know, they put 100,000 vehicles in order um, to be made for them. And their goal is, they're saying the goal is still to have 25,000 uh, trucks by the end of this year. I mean, you have supply chain issues, you have lawsuits, you have the supply of your seats now suing you. So you, you think it could possibly go lower? It dropped 7% today. It's up in after hours. Six cents. Everyone put in, put, put in chat the price that I said that it would drop to. If we all collectively agree, home run. Y'all going to start paying this money on the back end, though. <laughs> yeah, shout out to everybody. That, and I don't, like I said, like I don't, I don't really trade on a daily basis, but sometimes I'm, when I look at the signals, I'm just like, all right, these are the signals, these are the signals. And I think we got up to like, I, that text, I think we up to like 70% gain in like f- maybe five hours. I'm like, all right, well, again, Number one, this is true. And shout out to G, my brother. We were just talking to each other. He was like, do I get out now? I'm like, well, what was the entry point? Was it 50%? Was it 20%? If you already passed it, get out. And then we saw what their earnings and obviously the price went up. So, you know, it's just valuable things and knowing your plan before you enter a position. Yes, please write the plan down before you enter the battlefield. Because what happens is your trade goes against you. Anybody ever traded and then everything you plan to do, you do the exact opposite. And you feel like you have no clue what's going on. Yeah, that's why it's important to write down. Like even for my traders, Sharpie. If you are hard headed, dry race marker. If you're disciplined, literally mark off the areas on which you want yeah. to get in. I, and this is and this and this is why it's so important. On Tuesday, I think they reported on Wednesday last week, but on Tuesday, as it was going down and it, it hit these numbers, I literally watched it from three o'clock to four o'clock every minute, and I watched it at the peak. I think my one of my my put was at up seventy five percent. I'm like, all right, well. My number was 60, so I'm out of here, right? I literally watched as it got closer to four, it was down to 60%, 55%, 40%, 35%. I said, oh, I said, I, I, I'm praying that everybody got out because the way that it was dropping, obviously people took their profits, but there's going to be a surprise when they, when they drop these earnings. And we saw it happen. We saw the, earn, the, the numbers go up, but there's still signals there that this is not something, you know, like they call it the dead cat bounce. Like it has a nice tick up or a slight tick up and then it goes back. I think we're in that position right now with, with Rivian. You I'm not saying that it won't, it won't work long term. I'm not saying it, it won't work long term. I'm just saying right now, they don't have the product yet. How many 5, trades have you taken this year? This year? Uh, Six. It's under 10. I'll say it's under 10 for sure. There's a solution and answer even in that. I put in Telegram. When the video is going off, you guys tell me if you take 15 trades in a year and get 20% on each trade and you win all of them, how much is that? Everybody that can trade can get more than 20%. What happens? You get up 50%, 80%, and then you start acting crazy or ego trading. I don't even need to follow those signals or look at fundamentals. For all of you who are like, yo, what should I look at first, month first? How many times have I said it? My new thing is you tell me. I've answered this, but if you don't, you need a checklist like a pilot before you take off. If it don't meet your parameters, let it go. And this is why I tell you to be patient. And we'll talk about the great reset at one point. I want to get my bags first and be real, but we'll talk about it at one point. But a lot of technology companies and old capitalists and old investors are going to get wiped out to usher in new wave of technology and new class of investors. That's why I tell you, if you study those business cycles, you can see the ebbs and flows. Energy literally was the technology sector before tech got big. And if it's the power of long-term investing, I put this in Telegram too, Stock Club, I won't say too much else. If you invested at the top of the market in 99, it took you 14 years to break that all-time high. 14 years. But if you held for 20, you would be up 300 to 400% and rich as hell if you bought every month. Investing is not hard. We just make it difficult. So. Um, okay. That's it. So before we bring our guest on, um, I'm looking at the show notes. I'll ask myself. Am I going to ask myself this question? Ah, uh, man. No, no. <laughs> yeah, Troy, you asked. So, let, let, me, let me take a shot at this. So, shot. <laughs> what advice would you give for clients if you were the, to consult them with this market? 
the current condition of this market. Obviously, we see interest rates going up. We see inflation. What type of advice if somebody's coming in, sitting at that chair, they need advice in their financial life? What are you telling them? Appreciate that. No problem. Um, I would say this. You know, being a financial advisor, I was in the game for 12 years. And um, it was crazy because I actually started in, in 2008. I started at the beginning of the worst recession since the Great Depression. And that, that's how I started. And um, I got to like experience that, like that was my like entry into the world of finance. So history, history always repeats itself over the course of time. I don't think it's going to be as bad as that situation because there was a lot of factors that go into play. But one thing that probably won't be on the good side, like they did last time in that situation or in the Corona is I don't think they're going to pump as much money into the marketplace. So it might be a little bit more prolonged. Bear markets usually last eight years. I mean, eight months. Um, So, you know, it might be choppy for, for a while um, and painful for a while. And another thing that when you study history is that you realize that um, during bull market runs, the stocks and the classes that go up the most go down the most in the next bear market. So that's why I was always saying that, you know, I felt like tech was over, overinflated. I felt a lot of those tech companies was just, you know, running up too much. And um, now tech is down the most. Mm -hmm. It's no, it's, it's following what history usually predicts. So I would tell people to, um, to be patient, to understand it's not going to be something in my opinion, that you're just going to catch the bottom tomorrow. And then it's just going to be like, you know, all good again next week. Like, you know, just be patient. It might take a while for this to actually settle before we actually see some sunny days, like long-term sunny days. It might be a couple here and there. Um, put your money in positions that you think have good long-term, you know, appreciation. We talk about that all the time. All of the stocks that we talk about, all the ETFs that we talk about, cost Michael, Microsoft, Apple, um, the S&P 500, XLK, XLY, you know, things of that nature. Um, Google, Amazon, especially after the split. Um, yep. But also, you have to have a strategy in place. So, like for me personally, about a month and a half ago, I told Troy he didn't agree with what I did at the time. But almost two months ago, I sold around eighty percent of my of my options, my long term options. I saw how it was going, and you have to ask yourself: mm-hmm. Would I rather? Would I rather? take a hundred percent, 80% profit or run the risk of losing everything. Take Easy decision for me to make. Exited my, my positions. I didn't exit all of them. I probably should have exited all of them to be completely <laughs> honest, but you're looking at looking what, back. What's one you still in? Um, QQQ. Um, but that's a December, 2023 call. I'm in yeah. an Apple. I'm in an Apple call and I'm in, a, um, XLY call still, but I sold, I sold SMH, I sold AMD, I sold Apple, I sold Microsoft and I sold, um, XLY, but they was, they was, uh, January, 2023 calls too. So you run the risk of, you know, I I have no doubt that all of those companies are going to, you know, flourish, but you kind of run the risk that January will be here before you know it. Mm -hmm. So you got to kind of make calculated decisions, but well, what will I will do? is um, wait for this this thing to really, you know, see how how bad it's going to get. Of course, making long-term, most of the money's going to go long-term, but I'm going to put some some money in and some options on like a slingshot situation. I'm going to see. The 2024. As far as, far as, far as out as I can, I can go. go. Yeah. As far out as I can go, depending on how long the situation lasts. But to answer your question, Ian, um, I don't really like to do options on individual stocks too much, unless it's like a Smart. Apple, Microsoft. I will be tempted on Google if if they continue to fall, and maybe Amazon, especially after the split. We have to see how that situation plays out. But um, I mean, it definitely is like a, a XLY or like a XLK. I'll look at like the ETF that I'm already invested in and see which one yeah. has the, the 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 deepest pullback. And um, yeah, yeah, I'll probably I'll probably put some money in, into that. Yeah. Uh, if you if you do X L Y, um, throw you a lot real quick. What what like wait till it gets to like one twenty two or like one fifteen? As far as Google, 
Um, we got to adjust it for the split, but if it gets down to like 1800, boy, I'll fire. <laughs> Load the boat. <laughs> yeah. So, Titanic. so yeah, it's opportunities. It's always opportunities in every crisis. Um, but a, you, this is why it's always good to have money on the sideline. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the dollar is actually strong right now relative to other currencies over the world. That's mm-hmm. a good thing, even though inflation is sky high. But, you know, it's not, it's nothing wrong with sitting money on the sidelines and just being patient and just waiting because there's always opportunities. But um, you run the risk of losing a lot of money when you try to buy the dip and it keeps dipping. <laughs> when I dip, you dip, we dip. Yeah. Yeah, and can, can we be honest about the dip is not a strategy. It is a colloquialism to tell people uh, when you don't want to give a real answer on, on where to invest. Yeah. yeah. That's how you like when I'm like, hey, what's the key to success? Brothers, just work hard. And keep, man, God going to make a way. Yeah, God going to make a way. I need a plan, though. <laughs> keep the faith. What, what's a full, full? You guys have to learn and discern when people are just BSing you or don't want to upset you because they're like, no, I'm not going to give you the answer. Every artist that you ever heard, hey, what's the key to success? Man, just record and, you know, network. Somebody will hear you. If you're in Idaho, probably not, bro. No, you need a full plan. Shout out to Idaho. Full plan. And cash is not necessarily trash. It's only trash when you have no strategy. But Mm -hmm. cash can be extremely effective when you have a strategy in place. Put money on the sidelines, and then you wait to deploy it. Um, you don't have to rush. You don't have to rush into an investment. And to be completely honest with you about it, if you're playing in this individual stock game, a lot of people just talk about individual stocks because they just want to entertain you because there's not really that many good stocks to invest in. And it's a lot of these individual stocks are extremely risky. You don't really see ETF, a good ETF or a good index fund pulling back like 70%. You're not like, you see a lot of stocks pull back 70%, 80%. So I'm going to be honest with you. We could talk about like these individual stocks, the stock of the week and this stock and this stock. That's good for this. media. That's yeah. how y'all blew up your account. I'm, I'm being, okay, let me get back to in. <laughs> put, put yes in chat. Would you have lost less money if you would have just invested in VOO, VTI, Apple, and Microsoft? It almost would take the act of God, the probability of Apple and Microsoft falling at the same time. You have a greater likelihood, and I'm in Los Angeles now, you have a greater probability of California falling off into the ocean mathematically than Apple and Microsoft falling 70% at the same time. Hope is not a strategy. What is the math? And if Michael, if Apple and Microsoft falls before 2027, That's when you'll start to see if Tim Cook retires and you start to get some headwinds about China taking TSM, it's over for America. I'm just going to be real with you. Tim Cook is a linchpin that's saving America right now. If he retires, I'm going to come right on. I don't care if it's Saturday night. I was over with. Let it all go. Straight cash. Cash is better than negative 70%. That is a fact. That is 100% factual. And that's why I say stop listening to everybody telling you don't keep cash. Nah, you got to have some. A, you got to have cash as a, as a savings account for an emergency fund. But yes. even bigger than that, like you said, the only thing I'm nervous about in my portfolio is options. My long term, yeah. not really, not really nervous about it. Long term smooth. Yeah. Because eventually it's going to come back. Yeah. But if it- a lot of people had 100% of their portfolio in options. That's dangerous. You never sure. want to put all your eggs in one basket unless you like gambling and you want a heart attack. That's why I keep telling you. you. <laughs> tech, yeah. but, and if I can, a lot of people chase that high of those wins. I mean, my guy Ty was talking about it earlier. When you guys like, I want to be an entrepreneur, I'm like, no, you don't. You're like, why you be so aggy? 16 hours a day to do it. Trust me, mm-hmm. four years, right? So you may not have success in your business for six years. Imagine working six days a week for six years and everyone's telling you you're crazy. 
and it doesn't work and you're not making money. A lot of people wanted those high flying wins from futures options derivatives because they don't want the sacrifice of putting it in a business and work whatever endeavor you are a part of, you're going to have to learn to master it. You're going to get your ass kicked anyway. Safety sure. is key. And if you right now, some of you, if you would have just invested even on the option side, just in Apple and Microsoft, you'd be up. You would have had family and friends who would end up giving you two, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand. It's a lot of people quiet now, and I get it. But use this, these losses as motivation to never make these mistakes again, and study your ass off. But literally, there isn't one company that is available to the public or that is known that can give twenty percent return per year for ten years. Trillion dollar opportunity with all this technology. Yeah. Everybody know RSI, Stochastics, and, and Fibs and all this shit n- can't produce 20%. Most business owners are like, are you crazy? It's a bad year for a normal business. It's an important lesson, too. Like, like you said, so like we, I spoke about this Saturday, and it was like the biggest lesson is that I had to see the losses early, mm-hmm. right? So I know not to make the mistakes. And so some people are in that space right now. Like they started investing. Like we said, that influx of investors, especially African-Americans, that came into the space in 2020 and 2021, this is their time. But that cash on the side is so vitally important because the other part of, hey, having those losses early is also saying, man, if I had more capital to deploy when the market was down, I'd be so much further ahead. And so it's, it's cool to say like, yeah, I have money on the side, but actually having that plan and having the actual companies that you want to invest in and saying, all right, now I have the capital to deploy. Because it's nothing like when you have like $1,000 to invest in a company, Right. Mm-hmm. You, and you say it all the time, I mean, when you invest the little, um, the, the least amount, that stock always shoots oh, up to its high speed. 52 yeah. week high, all time high. Right. And then when you finally get the capital and you put 10,000 in, right, here we go. 20% yeah. pullback. And so, I'm and so it's situation. part of it. It's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Parting words before we bring our guests on. It yeah, will, it's be, gonna it be, will yeah. get worse. It will get worse. Yeah. yeah. And the last thing I want to say, um, since you brought it up, you don't think that the timing, not for everything I say with reason, good or bad, quote unquote, you don't think that a new wave of investors came in in 2020 and made some noise. And long term investing options, futures, and crypto. And then all of a sudden, every asset class on earth falls apart. I think about it. Tech, industrials, utilities, growth stocks, the bond market, crypto, credit, housing will be next year. All falls apart. Is there really a supply shortage or if you yeah. orchestrate something, you drop your value? Work. Yeah, right. Like, all right, we lost money in investing. We need people to get back to work. Well, what do we know? Nothing at all. <laughs> Mike clipped that up. Um, yeah, I think we can bring our prestige- procedures. Absolutely. Um, Back to you, Troy. I'm learning all <laughs> of you, right? Yeah. Give me three now more that weeks. We're, <laughs> now that we're here, we've, we've got our guests. What's going on, brother? Oh, brother, how are you? How are you gentlemen doing? How are you Great. doing? How are you? It's a lovely Monday evening. I'm doing very well. It's uh, it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you all, and uh, really appreciate you giving me a, an opportunity to to speak to your your audience here. This is a fantastic conversation. I've just been sitting in the in the back here, listening and learning, and a lot more to learn. Uh, a bunch of a bunch of financial wizards here, uh, really spinning knowledge. So really appreciate your uh, your leverage of what you're doing here. Oh, Thank good. you, brother. I appreciate, I appreciate you. Ian, Ian, would you like to give the introduction? Yeah, um, he's going to be incredibly humble about it. But when it comes to small business and growth for black entrepreneurs, this is the man everyone needs to tune into, especially if you're in the New York, Jersey, Connecticut area. Um, Given that we are in such a well, everyone clap it up for a guest if you want to introduce yourself, my brother. Oh, well, I uh, so so my name is is Ken Eby. Um, I am the inaugural executive director and chief development officer of Black Entrepreneurs NYC. Mm -hmm. We are an initiative of the New York City government, specifically the New York City Department of Small Business Services. And uh, our mission is in the name. 
our, our focus is on trying to provide information, resources, uh, connectivity to build out the infrastructure here in New York City uh, to support black business ownership and entrepreneurship throughout the five boroughs of New York City. So we, we're focused on a whole number of, of areas, but what we're really trying to do is similar to what you, you all are doing here on the program is, is kind of get underneath um, you know, what we're seeing on the surface and address some of the structural issues that have, uh, that have made it such a, a challenge for black people to, um, to gain wealth and to, to have generational wealth uh, in the yeah. United States. Um, and I wanna say kudos to the good brother Hassan Muhammad for uh, setting this up and having you here. Given that the market has fallen apart and I know you know this, but every time a recession happened, the wealth gap increases even more. Um, and I think it's really important for all of us to have businesses in addition to investing. What are some of the mistakes that you think entrepreneurs are making that you specialize in helping them fix that allows them to scale and uh, build a profitable business? Well, I'll say the first thing, there are, there are a couple that are, that are, that are key. I think uh, and this speaks a little bit to something that you were mentioning just a few minutes ago, Ian, it's that uh, a lot of people go into this idea of being an entrepreneur without having a real plan. They just have, they have an idea uh, they haven't even really done their research to see if somebody else had that idea or is actually implementing that idea and whether or not it's effective. Uh, they just say, I've got something that I want to I want to do. I've got passion. I've got hustle and uh, I'm going to make it happen. Right. Yeah. And um, so so going into um, going into an enterprise without really doing the research and without actually having a business plan is, is the number one issue that that plagues folks. Uh, number two is, well, I'll say, I'll say number two is lack of access to capital. That's a challenge that a lot of people face, particularly black entrepreneurs uh, face that challenge due to historic uh, challenges and discrimination in terms of being able to access, you know, bank loans and, 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 and uh, credit at reasonable rates and things of that nature. But I think that one of the mistakes, uh, I guess this is 2B, two, two um, is that people who go into business who do not have access to capital think that the capital, getting that capital is going to solve all the problems. And so essentially not having a business plan and, and then not having the, uh, the network, kind of the ability to speak to people, to connect with people who can uh, provide you with advice that'll help you avoid some of those, those pitfalls uh, that ultimately... Um, you know, will we'll not be able to be recovered by that capital you have. So what I like to refer to it as is the absence of relational capital. Uh, that's a real challenge that some people do not appreciate. They need to build that up and develop that in order to be successful uh, in, in, this, in this particular space. One of the initiatives of, of B, uh, NYC is to address the structural challenges of business ownership, particularly in high growth and high priority industries. Can you tell the people what exactly those industries are? <laughs> Stay focused. Stay focused. My apologies, yes. brother. This yo, is the issue we're doing a live show. Yo, put no. the monster down, man. <laughs> it wasn't me. It's the little AI thing got activated. <laughs> Tech can't live with it. Can't live without it. So, so we, yes, we have, uh, to your question, we've identified uh, in, in our research five industries that we uh, believe to be high growth. And, and most, if not all of them, are, um, are tech-related, tech-adjacent. Um, First is, is financial tech, fintech. Um, the, uh, the opportunities exist due to some of the historic uh, <coughs> challenges I mentioned before, a level of, of mistrust, uh, to be frank, that, that many people in our community have for traditional uh, uh, banking institutions. And so there's an opportunity uh, to, to really uh, provide the services uh, through some of these up and coming fintech startups uh, and then also the opportunity for, for those of us who are entrepreneurial minded, who have the skill set and the relationships to actually start up businesses in that space here in New York City. Uh, so fintech is one. Education tech is another. We've seen it impacted by uh, the pandemic. I have two young children. Uh, we tried to be home school administrators and teachers. Uh, was not great, but uh, there is going to be the understanding that education and technology are, are merged and, and we really cannot get away from the knowledge and the understanding that 
in person is not the only way to go. So there's gonna be technology continuing to develop that allow people to teach, allow students to learn uh, remotely and how to really implement that in, you know, in ways that are culturally specific, um, that are designed by and for uh, people within our community. It's gonna be a big area for entrepreneurs. Um, healthcare tech is another one for obvious reasons that we've, we've identified. Um, in, in the midst of this particular pandemic. Uh, and then we also see great opportunities that are, that are driven by uh, the city government and its, its focus on uh, environmental sustainability. Um, the green infrastructure uh, space is gonna be one. It already is one where we're, we're seeing a lot of demand coming from city government. When you think about city procurement and contracting opportunities and uh, what it really means to get a contract in an industry that is really getting pushed by uh, city government, a particular administration that has a focus on sustainability. There are opportunities for businesses, for entrepreneurs to potentially uh, pitch and, and, and solicit contracts in that space and, and to, to be able to scale out. So New York City, uh, I'd say across administrations has really been looking at turning the corner on that particular industry. And so there will be opportunity there. Uh, and then the, the last one, is one which we're all hearing about and reading about. Uh, and Mayor Adams made an announcement on April 20th about this, but it is the city's uh, commitment to um, the legalized cannabis industry. So uh, we, see, we see cannabis as, as one of those areas where um, there's tremendous opportunity for entrepreneurs. And, and also to be frank, a tremendous opportunity uh, for some, some uh, restorative economic and social justice together mm -hmm. in that space. So, so those are the let five. You, let me ask you this. Well, then that was great. Um, before I ask the question, so you graduated from Harvard and then you went to Yale? That's, that's correct. I, I graduated from Harvard College, undergrad, uh, and then uh, traveled abroad, went to Africa for a year on a Fulbright, uh, which, was, which was great. And then I went to Yale for law school. Great. That was a little like longer, a little longer ago man. than I'd like to admit. <laughs> was, uh, Amazing. Well, that's that's impressive for sure. So let's talk about New York City, um, some place that's near and dear to our heart. And uh, it's interesting because, um, you know, we talk about Atlanta a lot as far as the, the Mecca for black business. Yes. Um, but New York City is where New York City has the largest black population in America. And it's also the largest city in America. So it's a little disturbing that when we talk about black businesses, we don't see the same level of black business in New York than we see in Atlanta, where there's actually more pe black people in New York than there is in Atlanta. So what is, what is, and, but we now have a, a black mayor, we have, you know, people that's in high places. So are there any programs um, for black entrepreneurs that the city has or different initiatives or educational resources or things of that nature that people might not know about? Absolutely. So uh, first, as I, as I mentioned at the top, um, we are, uh, Black Entrepreneurs NYC is an initiative of the New York City Department of Small Business Services. And, and so our, our commissioner, uh, Commissioner Kevin D. Kim is, is squarely focused on the issue of equity in terms of everything that we do, all of the services that our agency provides and trying to kind of econo economically unlock the potential of New Yorkers and create security for New Yorkers. Uh, so we are an initiative of, of this agency and we, you know, Black Entrepreneurs NYC, as you, you ask about particular programs, uh, was launched in 2019. And I came on board as the inaugural executive director and chief development officer in November 2020. Uh, and we have steadily over the past year and a half built out uh, some very key programs that are focused on really delivering information resources to Black people who are looking uh, to start a business or looking to scale a business that they have, so it came out of you know a number of a number of conversations and some real research that we did. Like like everything, it has to be grounded in the research. But there was a significant amount of research that was done uh, prior to my coming on board. Um, surveyed over 1,500 Black entrepreneurs, had a great convening uh, at the Apollo Theater uh, and, and in 2020, and, and had some conversations. Um, with community leaders, business leaders, et cetera, to kind of address what are the, what are the core issues that we could look at as a city uh, to create some systemic change. And so we looked at uh, these results and four pillars came out of that. 
And, and so the programs uh, that we have here at Black Entrepreneurs NYC uh, address those four pillars, which are you know, the issue of equitable access to financing, helping to develop professional networks and, and provide professional advice to Black people trying to start and scale their businesses, trying to use uh, the city procurement process and the contracting process to attach Black founders to, to contracts that can allow them to, to scale their business up and, and bring on more employees uh, and, and create that kind of um, impact for, for the Black community uh, overall. And then, and then, as I mentioned, those five high priority industries, really trying to, uh, this may be a dated, a dated metaphor, but trying to put Black folks in the, in the DeLorean, really, and, and, and look at the future uh, of entrepreneurship. What areas are going to be poised for high growth for the next generation and, and beyond? And how do we uh, create those, those entrees for, for uh, aspiring and, and current entrepreneurs to look at starting businesses in those areas? Just, so stand, we have, just stand up. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's, that's what I was going to say. We have a whole bunch of, we have five programs which we built out over the past year and a half. We've established five uh, public-private partnerships to drive these programs as well. Yeah, so there's, there's 1,500 entrepreneurs in, in the program right now. My first question is, how does one become part of it? And two, are we restricted to be inside the city limits of New York City, which means the obviously the five boroughs, or is it a tri-state area? Or is it, can you have the business throughout the state? It's just that the program is run from New York City. Well, the programs run from New York City, and, and the focus of what we're doing is on residents of New York City. Uh, that's not to say that you can't tune into a webinar or, or a Zoom, just as, as we're doing right now. I know that you have an audience from around the country, uh, and it's, it's really important because uh, in, this, in this era, uh, people from all over the country, all over the world, to be frank, can support a small or medium-sized Black-owned business you know, locally. So we want to have as many people as possible know about our program so that they can speak to their family, their friends, their colleagues who are actually on the ground here in New York City. But our programs are, are you know, they're for people who live in New York, taxpayer funded. So, so uh, the programs are open and, and at most, at mo in most cases, they're, they're free of charge at the New York City Department of Small Business Services and ours are, are no exception. Um, but that's where we're focused. Uh, what advice would you give entrepreneurs on maybe three things to do to scale their business? And in addition to that, what are maybe three or four books that has had an incredible impact on your career as an entrepreneur? Well, with the, um, the three things I would say in terms of um, what, what to do to scale your business, I would definitely say um, you should leverage your, your government and, and understand what kind of free resources and information is available. You'd be surprised at how many people do not know about the New York City Department of Small Business Services and, and the programs that we provide, everything from how do you, uh, how do you create a business plan uh, to how do you set up the legal entity to run your business uh, to what are some sources of financing that you should look for. Um, it, it goes the whole gamut. Uh, these are programs that are provided by the New York City Department of Small Business Services. Not to speak of what I mentioned, information on how do you actually look to the city of New York as a client potentially by, if you are a black owned business, certifying your business as a, as a minority and women owned business enterprise in the city of New York. So looking at the city of New York as a potential client, not just a regulator as a lot of small businesses unfortunately mm -hmm. have the experience with. Um, so, so that's one thing I'd say, look at the, the resources that you have available to you through city government. Uh, the next thing I'd say is, is really focus on, on building out, you know, what we always talk about networking, networking. Well, as you said, Ian, you've got to have a plan. Um, I, I think it's important to, to kind of think about what industry you're in, uh, have a sense of who is where you want to be and, and develop relationships that connect both with what I refer to as, as horizontal uh, uh, relationships, uh, you know, people who are above you or, or founders who are above you in terms of experience, but also, uh, sorry, that was, that was vertical, uh, vertical relationships, but also horizontal relationships. Uh, and that's to say, if you are in a specific space, if you are potentially looking to build out a retail business, if you are trying to build out a fintech business, network with other people, your peers who are, are trying to do the same thing. Iron sharpens iron. And so you can find ways to, to work with each other and to, to build with each other. Uh, I think a big part of what we're trying to do is dispel the notion that entrepreneurship 
is an enterprise for individual lone wolves who just kind of out hustle and, and, and take down everyone around them. It's particularly in our community, it's important for us to appreciate how that particular ideology has been to the detriment of our community because a lot of individuals have either uh, seen the way out of the community as success and they have done whatever it takes to, you know, in some cases, victimizing uh, members of our own community to get that success, to get out of the community. And then you have people with a tremendous amount of resources who are no longer present. And that is not, that is not a win to me. Uh, and so we're trying to kind of dispel that notion of, of the lone wolf entrepreneur and also what an what a entrepreneur who's successful or potentially successful investment looks like. Um, and, and in many cases, we have been excluded from that picture. Um, and, and so I say we, I'm saying that broadly. I'm not even speaking of uh, the we that includes our sisters, Black women, uh, who receive less than 0.02% of venture funding and who happen to be uh, the, the highest uh, growing um, demographic of entrepreneurship in the country. So uh, we, we, we try to tell people to build out those networks. That's important. And then, and then you know, really trying to focus uh, your, your imagination on uh, the future of, of business ownership. There are so many people who are thinking about creating the next sneaker brand or um, a clothing line. And, you know, while those areas definitely are always ready for innovation, uh, we're, we're looking at an economy that's going in another direction. And, and in many cases, those who are entrepreneurial should start thinking about what those opportunities are in some of these high growth sectors. So those are three pieces of advice. In terms of the books, Ian, I would just say uh, one book, and I, I tell the story all the time. I grew up um, on the south side of Chicago and um, literally room with my, uh, my, my younger brother and my, my, uh, my younger sister, my older brother, my brother and I shared a room uh, and we had, you know, some of the typical things on our wall growing up. We had, you know, that poster of, of MJ on the wall. Mm -hmm. We had we had the posters of some of our best you know, favorite baseball players and what have you uh, from the Sox. Um, and then and then on my wall, I was on the top bunk literally every night before I went to bed. There was a picture portrait of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the wall and a portrait of the first black mayor of Chicago, Harold Washington. Mm. Yeah. And there's a legend. Legendary, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I could talk to you for hours about what he did in Chicago, what Maynard Jackson did in Atlanta, what uh, I'm, I'm hoping we will see. And I know that has been uh, articulated from Mayor Adams in terms of what he wants to do to create equity for, for businesses here in New York City. Um, but on the bookshelf, uh, we had we had uh, a copy of Why Should White Guys Have All the Fun. Oh, that's um, a great book. Uh, Reginald Lewis. And so, so these are some of those guiding forces that, for me, uh, created a sense of what was possible and what we needed to do uh, to, to be able to really achieve uh, what, what, you know, manifest what we uh, are, are here to, to manifest for ourselves, but also for our community. And, and I think when uh, one of us win, uh, it, it doesn't, automatically mean that we all win. I think that if the one of us who does win is thinking about the rest of us and bringing the rest of us along, then we all win. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know if I have some time to tell you about a specific initiative or innovation that we wanted to, uh, to integrate. And this is actually something that everybody, no matter where you are uh, in the country, can, can kind of log on and check this out. But, um, but we have an initiative called the Shop Your City BNYC Marketing Campaign. Um, and, and, and what, what does it entail and why do we do it? It's, you know, the idea of really driving some support to black owned businesses, concrete support is something which when I started in November, 2020, I, I asked around my new colleagues. So do we have a list of black owned businesses in New York city? Mm -hmm. Um, do we have a running list that we keep track of? And the answer was no. And I'm asking, what is the resource that we we use. And there's, there's uh, an MWBE database, which is minority and women owned business enterprises. Uh, but we could speak about the disparity within the disparity there, right? How many of those are black owned businesses? It's, it's a small number. And then how many of those get contracts? It's an even smaller yeah. number, right? But there's no such list. They're just kind of uh, links to different articles, you know, that you'll find on Blavity or whatever about black owned businesses, but like, where's the list in New York City? So uh, we said, why don't we just create that, create that directory? And so uh, part of this campaign is really to encourage New Yorkers to shop 
at black owned businesses, we said, we're going to create the city's first ever online black business directory. So mm. if you go to uh, nyc.gov forward slash shop black, you will go to what is essentially our beta uh, website where we are populating this directory with uh, what we hope will be the most comprehensive directory of black owned businesses uh, that are situated within the five boroughs of New York City. So um, in this run over the next month uh, and leading up to Juneteenth, we are trying to get all black owned businesses within the five boroughs to register their business on this website. Again, it's www.shop uh, .nyc.gov uh, slash shop black. And, and then uh, in, in, in the month of June, around Juneteenth, we're gonna really push this out. Uh, would love your help as well, uh, you gentlemen, to, to get the word out to, to consumers to say, hey, this is a resource that we want you to go to if you really do wanna support black owned businesses. And, and mind you, this is not just for Juneteenth or Black History Month, this is year round. One, one quick follow one up, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, you know, I was actually um, in the bank today and a gentleman ran out on the streets to, to greet me. And then I ended up talking to him in the bank. And he's a guy uh, from the Bronx um, who's an entrepreneur um, and he was in the cannabis industry. So it's funny you had mentioned the cannabis industry. So, um, you know, I would like to have a conversation about that if we can, because we understand that. And this is like just a nationwide conversation that you know, unproportionately, uh, black men have been locked up for cannabis um, for years. And now almost, I think 99% or 98% of the people that's actually open and legal cannabis companies are, are white. Um, so now we're kind of being locked out of the economic side and so much, you know, regulations and red tape and it's discouraging the people and capital. So New York City, um, you know, kind of late to the party, but at the party now getting, you know, more and more into the legal cannabis situation. What is the plans to help disenfranchise black entrepreneurs get into the cannabis space? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. We're, we're in the process of, uh, building out, uh, an outreach and engagement strategy, um, and, and also, um, providing business support. So uh, Mayor Adams announced and, and our commissioner, uh, Kevin D. Kim has uh, been very active kind of out there talking about the need to uh, make sure that the development of, of the legalized cannabis industry in New York City is learning from the lessons from across the country. And, you know, being late to the party is actually an advantage to the, to the extent that we can learn some of those lessons about how um, black and brown um, entrepreneurs and legacy entrepreneurs have been uh, boxed out, even with the social equity provisions that some of these other uh, jurisdictions have have tried to um, to bake into their their legislation. So we are trying to we're actually following the state, New York State, the Office of Cannabis Management, uh, and, and the regulations that have been um, that have been uh, issued by the state to help build out the regulatory structure here in New York City which will be the largest market, right? Um, but a big part of that, uh, and our commissioner has spoken uh, very adamantly about this, is making sure that we are incorporating the legacy market in a way uh, that is real. And so what does that mean? It means the Department of Small Business Services, which provides technical support for small businesses, uh, should essentially use some of the resources that we have from the city now uh, to do outreach to make sure we are speaking to the right organizations that will have these uh, folks who've been involved in the legacy industry actually have a real pathway to starting a business, a legal business, getting a license and, and, and holding on to that license, right? Uh, because of the fact that there are so many, uh, as you mentioned, um, you know, well-heeled uh, people who are not necessarily the social, the intended social equity applicants, uh, who are who are poised and primed to to seize those licenses once the operator is is unable to kind of manage their cash flow or or, or kind of work out a five year plan and hold on to that license. So we're we're really trying to figure out ways to get to the equity entrepreneurs, but also to provide them with all of the uh, resources they need 
including the city's access to you know, capital resources and real estate so that they can have uh, a, a solid foundation to run a, a successful business. And the key is for wealth generation, hold on to that license so that they can pass that on to the next generation. That's what we're, that's what we're really focused on in New York. So over the coming weeks, we're going to be uh, having more of these conversations and building it out, but that's at the core uh, of what we're trying to do. And, and we are very optimistic that, that uh, being late to the party is gonna mean that we're gonna be getting this right. Can I just ask for you? Trailer. One last question for me, and Ian, you can, you can end it. Um, that I've, uh, this information has been incredible, especially for our city, man. We, we take great pride in, in saying that we're from New York and making sure that things are happening here. Now you, you talked about building a business, but one of those the other key components that you have in uh, BNYC is that you help build community. And so I know there's a lot of entrepreneurs that may have a great idea, may have a business plan, may become entrepreneurs, but they don't know how to build a community around their business and maybe can't give everything away, but what are some steps or what are some like keys to help building community around their business? Uh, and you're speaking about community in the industry, community with your peers, in addition to community to say uh, potential customer base, correct? Correct. So, so the first thing is, uh, you know, being a part of an initiative like, you know, BNYC, it's first of all, it's very easy. How do you, how do you join somebody? I think uh, was one of the questions. You, you basically go to our, our website. This is one of those ways to build kind of the community. Go to our website. It's www.nyc.gov forward slash BENYC and uh, sign up for our, our listserv. And in that, you're going to find information. Every month, we put out a newsletter about the events that we're doing. Um, we, we encourage in every event that we do uh, that everybody who's attending introduces themselves, whether they you know, get off of mute or they put their name and their contact information in the chat. Uh, network building is a huge part of what we're doing. And so it, you know, when we have events that are focused on, for example, last month, we had a a crypto talk with John Sally, um, mm. and, and he, you know, he gave uh, a big talk for our BNYC Mentors program. You have a lot of fintech folks, people who are interested in that space, who are getting into a Zoom together. And so we encourage everybody share your information with one another. We encourage all of our panelists. We essentially, you know, strong arm them. You better like tell folks how they can reach you, right? Mm. So, so uh, you know. Gentlemen, when we have you on our one of our next BNYC mentors sessions, we're going to be asking you to share your email and, and you know how can people reach out to you, right? But but part of that, um, it, it's it's building that community in that way, right? Um, so uh, I, I encourage people who are trying to get into space to to, to first of all get uh, familiar with BNYC, but but kind of larger, uh, and this is a question that I think you were asking is, you know, kind of identifying right that some of these spaces while they might not necessarily be uh, tailored for us. Uh, some of these, uh, these incubators and these workspaces, like we have every right to be there as well. And so making sure that we are on mass learning about where these, these spaces are and mm -hmm. making sure that we are getting in the room and learning what we can and building with each other when we are in those rooms together. Um, this, is, this is a key aspect of what we, we try to promote. And then for the business itself, once you've launched, you know, we're trying to put out programs that are focused on, on marketing and how do you identify, you know, the transition? We talked about the pandemic pivot. Um, you know, we have some folks who are really just trying to run a, just a regular small business like a barbershop, right? Um, there's a path to doing that well too. Um, you don't necessarily have to run a, a tech adjacent or tech, a tech, you know, have a tech idea to try and, and, and be a, a business owner. But how do you create um, spaces where, where those people uh, can connect with one another. Um, we, we try to make sure that the BNYC, you know, creates that connectivity. My final question for you, because they'll kill me if I don't ask, for those that are trying to do business with the city of New York or any municipalities, like what are the process or steps that an entrepreneur can take to begin to do business with the city or state? Well, the first thing I would say is it's important for you to learn about the, uh, the city's MWBE certification program. And, and you can get information on that by going to the uh, New York City Department of Small Business Services uh, website, uh, which is nyc.gov forward slash business, or 
if you want to use your phone, you can call 888-SBS-4, the number 4, NYC. And you could just learn about the process of getting certified as, an, as a minority and women-owned business enterprise. We have a, a whole host of webinars, informational sessions uh, in multiple languages uh, that, are, that are really designed on providing the, you know, the 101 on how to get certified. So when you learn about that, you then learn about the different systems that you will then be registered on, uh, mm -hmm. the whole, you know, the process of a, a procurement going out, the, the RFP process, request for proposals, how do you submit a bid, um, and, and how do you compete um, effectively for city contracts? But, uh, but the first step is going to uh, the SBS website or calling the SBS hotline and our specialists can, can direct you from there. You mentioned Ian, the state, the state has its own certification program. Um, and then there is the, the Port Authority here in New York as well, which has a significant number of contracts. There's also the, the Metropolitan Transit Authority, the MTA, the subway, the buses, et cetera, um, which, which has a, a process for certification. Uh, and um, so it's really important that everyone is aware of, of those. And there's a level of reciprocity as well. If you, if you register and get certified you know, you know, with the city, you, you have some benefits with the state and et cetera. But I'd start with going to the, to the website for the city's Department of Small Business Services. Thank you. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And, yes. and uh, I'm going to be listening to you all. I, I hope that we will be able to get uh, the three of you, if not all three of you, at least one of you, uh, to participate in some of our programming going forward. But I, I really do appreciate the time and the ability to connect with you and your, and your audience. You're doing great work here. It's appreciate honor. you. Appreciate appreciate you guys. We'll, we'll be you. there for sure. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good one, man. You too. Yes. Shout out to Kenneth. Very educational, um, especially in New York. But even if you're not in New York, you dropped a lot of information, a lot of gym. So, you know, it's good to do something for the for the city. You know, we talk about Atlanta all the time and got a lot of love for Atlanta, got a lot of love for LA. But um can't forget the biggest market. Hated to love it. No place like home. No the financial like market, home. the epicenter. And yes. you do you guys want something with the education. Yes. Stay tuned alert. Stay tuned alert. Very good. <laughs> already tuned. You, uh, it looks like the worst kept secret. <laughs> Did someone mention ed tech? <laughs> uh, yes, yes. Um, wow, that time flies. Janet, sorry, I don't think we're going to have time for questions today. We do but one. I'm all good. We do one question? Yeah, let's squeeze in one. All right. Well, Jan while Janet's we have to be for the people. That is true. <laughs> and this is for the people. Let's do something really quick, man. This is for the people. So shout out to all of our earners. Shout out to the Red Panda family. And shout out to our Ally family. All right. So we teamed up with Ally to help empower the next generation of creators, entrepreneurs, leaders uh, that are in the financial education sector. So as you know, Ally is helping us give away 20 full year scholarships to Earning Leisure University, where you can learn real world skills to help you pursue your financial goals. So if you're a creator, entrepreneur, or someone who's trying to gain financial success, uh, you have until June 3rd to submit. June 3rd to submit. So here's what you got to do. Go to www.eyluniversity.com slash giveaway to submit the email to enter, right? So Shadi and I are going to pick and announce five winners during each Market Monday episode up until that date. So because everything we do, we're all better off for the ally. I want you to go to that website right now, hit your emails, and shout out to our ally family. Here's what we're going to do right now, though, right now. Right, we're going to be announcing our first five winners. So, here are their names. Here are their names: Nancy Luis, Jacob Guerrero, Edmund Davis, Hadia Clark, and Rebecca Demby. Let me say them again: Nancy Luis, Jacob Guerrero, Edmund Davis, Hadia Clark, and Rebecca Demby. You are now officially an earner. Welcome to the other side. Welcome. Can we get some graduation caps in the chat, please? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, 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 man. You are now part of the family. Uh, it's going to be great seeing you on the other side. And you should be getting your email probably tonight or first thing tomorrow morning. So welcome to the team. Welcome. Janet, um, yeah, sorry. We're kind of on short time. Um, hey, Jan. But, uh, <laughs> Love your background. Hello. <laughs> all, yeah, it's fire. Shout out to Kenneth. The work he does is absolutely amazing. I thought that was incredible. And yeah. uh, let me get Kenya on here. 
Hopefully, she's and shout still out to on. Renee. Shout out to Renee. I'll earn her. She's in the chat putting all the websites in. I see you, Renee. Thank you so much for providing all that information for everybody in the chat. Thank you. Happy birthday to my sister. Also, it's her birthday. I know I was about to oh, happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday to Juan. Yeah. Uh, Juan 100 is what he calls himself. He's a big fan of the show. He said he met you guys recently, and I just want to shout yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, good dude. Yeah, I'm like, when <laughs> happy birthday, TT. This is from your professional photographer. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed your beta. Shout out to all the Tauruses. All right, Kenya, I'm coming to you. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. How are you? Hey, Good. I, I really feel like I needed this episode. Um, so my name is Kenya. I'm an orthopedic and critical care nurse practitioner in the city, uh, venturing outside of the hospital life, working to grow my own athletic recovery and IV hydration sports complex in New York. Uh, it's called KC Performance. Um, so just with everything that's going on, you know, in the world, in the market, is this a good time to open a business? Um, and in, in this market, are there any advantages or disadvantages to it financially? Um, is it okay if I go first? Yeah. True. Um, if you can withstand the next year and a half, and it's going to be tough, I'm not going to lie to you. And I'll give you books and resources if you need them that helped me. But there's no better time than a recession or depression to build a business. Because now the money that is dried up in most businesses, whether it's angel, venture capital, friends and family, that isn't free flowing, but people are looking for the next big idea that they can find. Also, oh, I probably shouldn't say it on the dream team, don't kill me. Most companies pull back on marketing, advertising, strategic alliances, in a recession because they think people are not spending. But if you have something that is really unique to offer, I would triple down. Like for you, I would post probably, 10, people won't say not to do it, trust me, 10 times a day on social. I would do at least one video a week, tweet four times a day, and I would do community twice a day, minimum. Mm -hmm. Test your message in there. Then once that messenger works, you find something that resonates, then you can begin to advertise. Once the ads work, you then can start to work your strategic alliances and your partnerships and then start thinking of if you're going to license the business out, franchise it. But yes, it's a great time to start a business for, for sure. Every big company that we love right now got founded in the last recession. It's tough, but I'm telling you, it's going to pay like nothing else. Yeah, I, I, if you think of it like, and you might have said this again, but like you think of a recession as a time of change. New businesses will be formed because the other ones have failed or they've collapsed. And so it's always mm -hmm. a good time. But you said, did you say hydration therapy? Is that, is that what your business is? Yeah, it's hydration therapy and um, athletic recovery. Yeah. Oh, so it's like the, the IV treatments. Yeah. So okay. uh, right now I'm just starting as a concierge service because just buying you know, a place to house the business is really expensive right now. So I'm trying to scale up from there um, just to kind of raise capital to eventually have my own, my own shop. But right now it's concierge throughout New York. Okay. Okay. No, that's dope. Well, 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 why not stay concierge the entire time? I'm sorry, say that one more time. I, I said, why not stay concierge the entire time and just expand the fleet? Um, not less capital intensive. Uh, because I, I think that if I, you know, can do it from both avenues of having a storefront and doing the concierge, um, you know, kind of because the physical therapy aspect is into it. I'm going to be doing different kinds gotcha, of okay. projections as well. So we need mm -hmm. uh, uh, like a space. Stable space. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Okay. Yeah. I was thinking maybe stay mobile. OK. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I was once a physical therapy major. So salute to you. <laughs> oh nice if you if you know anyone <laughs> i don't know we're looking <laughs> are you currently hiring uh yeah we're actually looking for uh uh strength and conditioning coaches physical therapists um, massage therapists that are focused on um you know sports medicine and any rns that are looking for um you know a side hustle the concierge iv hydration business is Booming. very good <laughs> Booming. and you you said you're located here in New York? Yep, I'm in New York. 
Yeah, can, yeah. Let's put it. Let's put it in the, in the yeah, Facebook group. Right? What's, yeah. what's your What's your website or your Instagram handle? Um, my Instagram handle is KC Performance with two underscores. And what's the website? I'm working on the website right now, so it's not officially up yet. But uh, most of all my business is going through through Instagram, word of mouth. Well, uptick soon will happen. <laughs> yeah, you have it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank Kenya. You. I appreciate you guys. All right. Thank you. Mark and Mondays, a wealth of information. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, real, real quick, I'm going to run off our earnings report. I'm going to go through them fast. Ian, uh, I'll let you talk about the companies after I say them. A lot of them are in the consumer discretionary category. And so tomorrow, Walmart will be reporting, Home Depot on Wednesday, Target, TJ Maxx, and Lowe's. Thursday, Kohl's, BJ's, Palo Alto. We spoke about them last week when we were talking about the cybersecurity companies. Uh, John Deere will be reporting on Friday, as well as Foot Locker. Shout out to our Foot Locker people. Uh, most of those, except... Uh... Well, Target, Walmart, I'm learning not to discredit any brand or business. Uh, John Deere, Walmart, Target, I'm learning. Wait, they got the zoom in look on you now. Yeah. <laughs> you got a robot doing the camera? I don't know what's going on, bro. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Yo, somebody cue my what you doing live? Boy, I don't. <laughs> well, let me be great. Oh, song. I need a producer in here. <laughs> Not the guy with the chair. Let me quit. Let me quit. Let me quit. Oh, man. That was classic. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, we can wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is me panning out. I'm doing As they peel movie. back. <laughs> oh, man. Love, love it. Love it. Love it. Market Mondays, man. You never know. Can't be the best place to be on Monday night. That's a fact. You never know what can happen. Um, well, yeah. The camera's on pineapple juice with a That's leather a jacket. <laughs> Boy, big Fendi. Big Fendi. How do we feel about Kendrick Lamar's album before we before we finish? Listen you gonna to do it? this? Oh, I ain't listen to it. I ain't get a chance to listen From to it. From what I've heard, and I, I I need to listen to it in its entirety. I heard, I mean, I'm I'm looking for masterpiece. So I'm that's what I've heard. Masterpiece. That's what I've heard. So you're saying it's a classic? I can't say it yet. I haven't listened to it, but I've heard Masterpiece, Genius at work. That's what I've Is heard. it music or art? Both. Both. Yeah. I know what you're going to say the second you listen to it. The first song, you're like, I can't listen to this squeaky voice shit. <laughs> you're like, this squeaky voice shit again? That's what you're going to say, but you got to listen. Get Pat, like. Shout out to Kendrick. Shout out to Kendrick. I haven't listened to it yet. He's out in Ghana right now. Shout out to him. I'm definitely going to tap in. And just one of the oh. dopest human beings and artists on earth. Yeah, yeah. Kendrick's a legend. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to the whole TV. Uh, yeah, well, we yeah. will see. Shout out to the city of Atlanta. ATL, shorty. We on the way. We back in town this weekend. <laughs> back in town. Yeah, like we were here, yeah, yeah we was here. We yeah. back, we coming back. We got some business to take care of. Shout out to Rose. Shout out to Ricky Rose. Shout out to Rose. EYL Boss. alumni, assets, assets over liabilities alumni. Um, his car show. If you're in Atlanta, pull up to his car show. We will be in the building. Um, Big fat. So shout out to Rose. Shout out to the whole team, man. Super, super cool people, man. Good, good people over there. Hey, Alex, Mac. what up? Lex, what up? Yes. Chanel, what's going on? Maybach yeah. music. Dallas this weekend for. Uh, JP Morgan, even if you can't make the event, we did a meetup here in LA. Probably would do one in Dallas. We probably should fly in town. I'm well, telling you, after this investment thing get announced, y'all saw my, my, little, my little story. I won't be gone. Be gone <laughs> We're going to have like the cloud pitching. Nothing was the same. Nothing was the same. <laughs> was ah, nothing was the same. Citadel Blackrock, call me tomorrow. Frederick, call me tomorrow. ASAP. Like, yeah, sold out. ASAP. Sure did. I'm gonna still get, don't, don't worry about me leaving forever. Let me go get a bag. I'm gonna pan out like the camera did. Come back real quick. Zoom in. Get my aperture right. Sure did. Sure buddy. did. Sure so, did. You've changed a lot. A lot. A, a lot. Way. A lot. All right, y'all. Y'all be good. It is. Uh, it was wonderful to to be here with you tonight. Uh, anytime we get to talk and and commence amongst each other is, is a beautiful thing. So shout out to y'all. 
tap in with somebody that you love. Uh, one text message obviously can change the trajectory of somebody's life. And and congratulations to all our college graduates. I know there's a lot of people. It's the yeah. is 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 the graduating season. So shout out to everybody that's graduating their undergrad, their masters, their doctorates. Shout out to all of y'all. Shout out to Pinky who you know uh, gave an uh, entrepreneurial grant to the students of Clark. Right? LLCs. LLCs to to just the graduates of Clark. Yeah, man, it's it's an incredible time of year. It's a lot of hard work to get you through that that process. So we salute y'all. Keep going. Shout keep going. Campus. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. Who better album? Uh, Kendrick or Feature? <laughs> That's like Talk about apples to oranges. No, Atlanta, close your ears real quick. That's apples to oranges. <laughs> Atlanta, no, close your ears. We got to stop shit. doing that. <laughs> Future and Kendrick, they make completely different music. Music is Future music, the bro. king of Atlanta. He the king of Atlanta. Lil Baby the king of Atlanta. Prince. Prince. You got one classic. That's all you need. My clip is <laughs> up. Put on Shade Room. Trying to get some more views. <laughs> Takashi, if you diss me, please let me know we can advance. Whack, call me. Game. Oh. <laughs> Game, call me. We get on Clubhouse. Right. I act like I'm upset. The travesty of him to diss me. Okay. Whack I'm like real me. upset. Oh, we... Whack, call me. <laughs> Go ahead. Whack, call me. I'll pay him to diss me. Whack, call me right right now. Boy. <laughs> it's only rat we jacking. Boy. Oh, oh man. <sighs> <Damn>. <laughs> <laughs> Family ties, oh, mob ties, man. Coco Loso, there you have it. Yeah, you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, never a dull moment. Can, can I get a pineapple right. Ciroc sponsorship? Can we set that up? That'd be hard. Yeah. Diddy, we know some people. Diddy, the Deleon team. Yeah, the Ciroc team. Dion, what's up? What's up, Lenny? What's up? Shout out to Lenny. One off. Dope episode. Oh, classic. Watched it last last week was dope. Shout out to Lenny. Yes, I see he's on uh, Angela Yee show this week. Shout out to Lenny. Do say what's going on? Her podcast. She has the the Acorn show. Oh, the Acorn show. Yeah, he's a guest this week. Yeah, dope. Yeah, shout out to him. All right. Well, been real. Been real, y'all. Love.